So this is a video that I didn't want to give y'all, but y'all got to get. I mean, I got, I'm going to give y'all an update what's going on. Only because Nav reached out and said, bro, just give us something. Let us know what's going on. So I hit. I was telling him what was going on about the incident I had. He was so fascinated. I'm like, this might be an interesting enough story to tell the people. So I guess I'll do it. So that's the reason why I'm on here. And a big shout out to JH. She doesn't want her name put out there, I'm assuming, because she has not put an emoji or anything to like give her a real name. But shout out to her. She donated $16 to the channel. So I want to give a special shout out to her. Um, but I'm going to tell her to keep her support until she sees my docu-film that's coming out because I want her to understand the truth of what's you know going on before she continues to donate because she may not want to donate after. Now let's get to the point, okay, guys. Yesterday was brutal for me, okay? Yesterday was absolutely brutal. I was going down the street and a car cut me off. The car, this car has like a safety feature to where it just stops abruptly and it stopped and my nose went straight into the steering wheel of this car and it caused me to start bleeding. Now this happened on Tuesday when I was driving back after driving across the country, you know, my car, my cousin's car across the country. I was in a freeway and I was going 60 miles per hour. A car ran into my lane and then stopped like because they saw the traffic ahead and it caused this car to stop and this car slid and it was no way for me to stop it. I couldn't stop the car from being on the brake. Like I couldn't stop the brakes from being, you know, hit because this car, the brakes just went off and it didn't give me a chance. I couldn't push the gas. I couldn't do nothing. I just had to like go like, like into the, um, you know, go into the stop. And that stop caused me to like my arm to get whiplash because like I jerked up, except that time the seatbelt worked. As you can see, the seatbelt doesn't work half of the time. Half the time it doesn't work. That time it worked. So the guy that was in the lane that I swerved into because the car broke, broke uh, the brake stopped and it slid and I couldn't like stop it. So I had to like swerve over to the other lane. He almost hit the side of the guardrail and I had to, you know, pull over with him because he thought, you know, make sure everything was okay. And he wanted to fight me, but he saw that I was another black guy. And I'm not a tough guy, but he wasn't a tough guy, but he was acting like a tough guy when he was on his way to the side of the road. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't want to get out because I'm like, this guy looks like he's gonna try to fight me. But I rolled my window down like, bro, the car stopped on its own, no way around it. I, you know, I didn't know what to do. I had to swerve a little bit. He's like, no, bro, it's okay. And, you know, we dapped up. I got out the car, looked around my car, everything was cool. His car was cool. I went on my way. It happened again yesterday. This car stopped and it, the seatbelt didn't work. So it caused my nose to hit the steering wheel. And I thought it was broke because I looked down, I saw all this blood pouring out um, after like a minute of not realizing I was bleeding. So the blood got all over the place to where I grabbed the towel, black towel that I had over here, grabbed it with my towel that I just took a shower with, put it on my nose, soaked the whole towel up, and it started getting worse to the where it started to like, um, I think the adrenaline rush is keeping the pain away because after like 10 minutes of straight bleeding, it wouldn't stop. Uh, I started getting woozy. So I, um, I, I pulled into a parking lot, by the way, when this happened. I drove myself to the hospital. I go in there and I recorded that video. I switched towels, recorded the video, and they said it was gonna be like a two hour wait possibly. So I go to the other hospital and it was about a three hour wait, but I did get to go in there and I, they gave me gauges or whatever. I put gauges, whatever they're called. I put it under my nose. And then an hour later, it took me for x-rays. And then two, half, two to three hours later, it took me in the back to tell me that it was not broke and that nothing they could really do. Uh, the woman said to just go in and like wash your nose and clean yourself up. You're dead. No, that's the movie I used to watch uh, back in the days. Like, go clean yourself off. You're dead. I think that's rush hour. But uh, I go in there and I wipe my nose and all the blood and everything came off. But I still had this cut that was bleeding. And she gave me like a Band-Aid to put on that. And, it, you know, it worked. But my nose still to this moment is still bleeding a little bit to where, like, if I put a tissue in there, the blood is still, because it was so much blood. It's, it's like caked up in there. So after that happened, okay, um, I had to go then get a hotel room because I couldn't be in a car with my nose bleeding because it would get all over the car. So I get a hotel room. I got a little bit of the blood on the bed, uh, but I was okay when I woke up. But guys, I'm gonna get straight to what I had planned. I planned on doing a 
docu-serious to where I was going to talk about my life every day, the ups and downs, everything that's going on. And I was going to do this on a daily basis. And I had all the video recorded for the past two days up until this accident happened. But now because of this accident, I kind of got to start over. Now, without starting over, I was going to do a, a, a film that was going to be like a bio of why I think the way I think, why I act the way I act, what has transpired the past, you know, uh, 15 years of my life that caused me to be this. And that was supposed to drop, the first episode was supposed to drop today. But because of this accident, it set me back on my editing time and I'm not gonna put, I'm not gonna half do it. I'm not gonna do it halfway. I gotta make sure it's done properly because of the fact, if I don't do it properly, you know, I'm going to get to a point of not wanting to do it again at all. So that's the reason why you guys don't haven't seen it yet. That's the reason why um, I didn't put it out today. That's the reason why I didn't put out no videos because ultimately, as I look for this little Caesar, um, we're gonna get into on this video, I'm gonna just give you guys some of the gems from that video you're gonna see coming up. But guys, like life experiences that I've had in the past is the reason why I'm the way I am. You're gonna see it on this um, docu-film, okay? Um, you know, being blessed with money, not knowing what to do, being having my ego boosted by people that were begging to be my friend, to hang with me, to, to do this, to do that, to having my um, you know girlfriend you know getting cheated on all these experiences that I had I'm gonna visualize it to you guys instead of me just talking about it all the time I'm gonna show you the visual of my experiences because most of these experiences I have um, on my phone now I'm gonna show you guys okay that's the point of this docufilm and then after next week which is gonna be full of just the docufilm after next week I'm going to then going to showing you my life every day. Every day I'm gonna show you my life now. It ain't gonna be Monday. Like you know how all, all the geek tubers they record on a Monday and they put the video out Monday night and it's not really edited properly. It's not really like dope looking. It's not really, it doesn't make sense. Um, I'm gonna actually put my heart and effort into this because I wanna be the best at anything I do. And for me to be the best at what I do, I have to put time and effort and and really, really knock it out of the park. And the only way for me to knock it out of the park is to have time. So you're gonna have a two day gap in between me putting out the video. So of Wednesday, the video ain't gonna be put out until Friday. Friday won't be put out until Monday. That's just how I'm gonna operate. But it ain't gonna be little 15 minute clips. These are gonna be hour long films because my life is more on a daily basis than a 15 minute video can show. Okay, so we're gonna do 15 um, minutes videos put in an hour long I, I said that all wrong we're gonna have instead of 15 minutes we have an hour long video now look guys the video is gonna tell you a lot about me but I will give you a heads up I don't want a nine-to-five and I'm talking about a nine-to-five that I'm not passionate about doing there's a lot of people like me a lot of geniuses like me a lot of people that think like me that just don't want to function in that type of lane give actually a cheat code to those of you that rock with me that show love to me i'm gonna give you guys more of like a i want to say a preview but more of like a insider um look into my life so keep in mind when i say insider look okay uh this video is probably gonna be a half an hour explainer okay i'm gonna explain to you guys why i think the way i think okay you have this nine to five concept this nine to five worker concept to where you have uh, most of, you know, us not wanting to work nine to fives, okay? And people call it being lazy. Some people call it being, you know, a failure, you know, not wanting to, you know, do what's needed. You have all these different things they say about you, but when it comes down to it, uh, especially with me, uh, I feel like I'm in prison. I feel like I'm in prison. Uh, it's to the point I'd rather be homeless on skid row than work a nine to five because of the fact the nine to five I'll be working is going to be something that's gonna be um, of a McDonald's or like a KFC or Walmart or whatever, etc. cetera. Um, that whole people moving up the ladder and all of that, uh, that's for smart people. Look, guys, when I say I'm not smart, I'm not smart. Now I'm good at a lot of different things. I'm talented at, you know, creating entertainment, you know, um, things for people to do. 
I'm good at that. I'm good at marketing something I believe in, okay? I'm good at, you know, creating, helping people create a brand that would hit, you know, a name that would hit. I'm good at a lot of different things, guys, buying and selling. But when it comes to working a nine to five, when it comes to, you know, having a competent boss, somebody that I know I'm better than at the job that they're doing, because I make sure to be the best at anything I do, uh, I don't do well. And understand, I've tried, but it just does not work for me. And this is me being real with you guys. And I know a lot of y'all are gonna say, oh my God, here's some excuses, but guys, I don't care. I'm telling you how I am. I'm telling you why I think the way I think. I'm telling you what led me to this point. So you gotta understand, you know, you're gonna see in this docu-film, the fact that when I started, you know, really going into the entrepreneur bag before I knew what an entrepreneur was, you know, I used to flip shoes. I told you before, uh, I used to just flip stuff, cars, whatever I can flip, okay? And I did work a regular job for like three, four years, okay? I had plenty of jobs. But all these jobs, I only worked for like three, four months and then I would quit because it was always just incompetence happening. Like you have MCI was the best job, but guess what? I didn't have a life and I went to play basketball. I was in high school still. So I quit that job, which I didn't. I wish I would've just, you know, stuck it out. But besides MCI, which was ran properly, everything was good. McDonald's, you have managers that was inefficient. Um, you literally had, you know, the food coming out late, food coming out slow, not being cooked and prepared properly. All these issues that I was unab un unable to fix because I wasn't the manager. I was a worker and I got blamed for these issues. You know, I got blamed for stuff that wasn't even my fault. But then like the schedule was off to where I didn't know when I was gonna work and when they could have made it better by just giving us a schedule, a set schedule, instead of telling us, you know, every four or five days when we're gonna work. Like, I don't have a life. Like, I don't have stuff to do. You know, you have like Burger King, for example. You know, you have um, the warehouses to work at. There were so many places I would work at. And it's to the point that, like, I'll be in there and I have like an eight hour shift. And, you know, I'm efficient. So, like, if I sweep the floor, I'm going to sweep the floor. I'm going to learn how to sweep the floor in a way that's going to allow me to get it done fast, but do it better than everybody else with anything. And it got to a point I'll do a job and you have people, workers that would yell at me like, dude, you're working too fast, slow down. Because guess what? I don't have nothing else for you to do. So we're gonna send everybody home if you get this done fast. Like boxes, loading up a truck. They wanted us to load the truck up slow because if you load it up fast or unload the truck fast, then you don't get off any sooner. We just find more stuff for you to do. But if you do all the stuff that it is to do, we don't have hours for you to do the next week. So now you're forced into working slow and incompetent. That ain't me. The way I function, a lot of it due to my ADHD, is that when somebody give me a task, it's a game to me to where I wanna get it done as fast as possible, efficiently, and as good as possible. So I don't half-ass anything. Like I do it to the fullest, okay? That's how I've always been, which is why in my life, okay, when I started putting on those parties, I took what everybody else is doing and I did everything better. I figured out a way to do everything better to where I was able to make 10 times the money everybody else is making with less money, okay? Compared to what I'm making. Okay, I had old staff, I had everything set up to where everybody was making money. It was all efficient, but the problem was, once again, um, we go into the compulsiveness when it comes to making money gambling, okay? Which is the root of all evil for me. But you have the parties, you have buying and selling phones. I do that efficiently, I do it great. I make good money when I got the money to buy phones. But when I don't have the money to buy phones, because of the fact that I got bills to pay and I can never save money because it's always this one root of all evil. Um, gambling, okay? Which we're gonna get into in this video also. That's the reason why the phone situation never work, okay? Parties, I could go back to Youngstown right now and put on parties. I can go to any small city and put on events and shows. That's not an issue. The issue is maintaining. The issue is you know, having the money to do it on my own because if I do it with other people, they don't do it the proper way. The proper way to have longevity, to have quality, meaning having real flyers, having real security, dressed in dress shirts, 
looking professional, everybody treating people with respect, not having a door person, patting people down, no. You gotta have one. You gotta have these things in place that's gonna make everything efficient. Buying and selling the phones. I get people sometimes more than other people because I buy in bulk. I buy more and I don't wanna negotiate with you. And I want you to understand when I buy this phone, I'm not going up on the price. I'm not doing it. I'm gonna give you this price. It's gonna be more than everybody else. And people usually take it, okay? Everything I do, running nightclubs, every nightclub that I had my hands on, I made into the best nightclub in that city. Okay, of course, small cities, but I've been able to do that because of the fact I hire the most attractive women available to me that can bartend. I hire the best looking guys to be the bar back and to do security because that's gonna attract women. And then having attractive bartenders is gonna attract thirsty guys. So it's gonna tip the bartenders more, which makes the bartenders happy and makes them work harder and be more efficient because they're um, being rewarded for their looks for the most part, not even the hard work. And it just makes me more money as a bar owner or, or manager because you got more money coming in. These are all things that I'm gonna do at an efficient rate, okay? But guess what? That's when I had motivation. That's when I was encouraged. That's when I had everything in front of me the way that I needed it to be, to be my best self. So now, you now with all that explained, okay? YouTube, YouTube I have not been my best self. When I started YouTube, I was just doing point and shoot videos, but I put my heart and soul into it. But then, as my channel blew up, instead of me growing with the channel and doing more edited videos, being more proper, making scripts, I decided to just be lazy and just do videos off the top of the dome like I'm doing right now. And you know where that got me? That got me in the same position as the Pedros and all the other people that make good money. Like Pedro, he showed his numbers, he made like 50,000 a year. But he could have made 100 to 200 plus thousand a year. But guess what? The videos are all the same. There's no editing, there's no scripting, there's no nothing involved with it. So you're gonna stay and continue getting the same views, the same numbers, every single video you put out. And that's not a shot to any of them. That's a shot to more so me saying that you have to be better, you have to evolve. You should be learning something every single day. Now with me, of course, it's easier said than done. I'm, I'm a hypocrite because guess what? Do I learn something every day? No. As I deliver that pizza about six miles and there's no tip on the app, you know, instead of me making videos complaining and whining and you know, like I used to back in the day when I first started doing YouTube, I never complained and whined about no tippers. I used to talk about those people who are the worst, but I never complained and whined about people not tipping. But now all I do is whine and complain about people not tipping, okay? And that, that does nothing for me. That doesn't help me. That doesn't put money in my pocket. But guess what I could do? Uh, instead of complaining, I can be doing videos that are quality that people want to watch me working and me delivering that would cause me to make money on YouTube that would continue to grow that would make up for the people that don't tip instead of me just yelling about no tippers because I'm so lazy that I don't put time and effort into doing the YouTube okay um, to a higher level okay I know I kind of slurred because I had um, the repair text that they're working on my car right now so yeah we're getting um, the car, the rental car, uh, taken care of. Back to the point, guys. I've been lacking motivation, effort, will, power to be my best self. No matter how much I come on and put this fake facade up, I've been like focused on just trying to get money with like gambling, with these things that are just fluky. Instead of being efficient, being great at what I'm doing, being the best at what I'm doing, you know giving people a reason to want to put money or time or you know invest their life into what I'm doing that's where we're at right now that's the reason why you know we're here we're here in this car we're here doing everything we're doing because it it led me up to being in the worst position that I could possibly be in at this moment for me at least because the worst position would be on skid row with nothing at least I have something so, you're gonna see in that video that I'm doing, that's gonna go out. Um, I'm gonna put a little clip out today, tonight, but the full video is gonna go out on Monday, okay? 
It's gonna be a docu-film. You're gonna see what led me to this mentality to have this type of mindset that could be good, could be bad. You know, it's based on the individual, you know? I know a lot of y'all might hate to hear this, but guys, I have a learning disability. And what I mean by learning disability is it's hard for me to learn. I know a lot of y'all look at me like I'm just this alpha male, great, like amazing, smart dude. And of course, you're gonna have haters, people who want to be negative, that's gonna try to say, we never thought you were that. But a lot of people look at me as like a superhero, somewhat, to where they think that I should be able to accomplish anything. You gotta understand, you gotta live in a real world. There's a lot of dumb people, and there's a lot of people that just can't uh, achieve what you may be able to achieve. You know, not any, not everybody can learn how to do math. Not everybody can learn science. Not a, a lot of people can learn how to do marketing. A lot of people don't know nothing about politics. It's about learning it. And a lot of times people don't learn anything that they're not interested in. It's hard. It's hard for them. And I have empathy for those people because I'm one of those people. I am a beast at anything I'm interested in. If I'm interested in something, I learn how to do it to the fullest. I'm a beast at it. I, I'm the best at it. Like, like I'm great. But I have to be interested in that thing. If I'm not interested in that thing, then I absolutely suck. Okay? So with YouTube, I'm not going to say I'm not interested. But I was a lot more interested when I was making thousands of dollars a month. I was actually doing better with YouTube. I was spending more time into YouTube. But then when my money dipped because of my lack of effort, my laziness, I started making up excuses on why my channel sucked by saying I got shadow banned, saying this happened, that's happening. But in reality, my channel sucks, my channel isn't growing because I'm not putting no effort into doing videos other than these talking off top of the dome videos that don't go nowhere. So, I'm going to still do that docu-series in the same manner, because I already recorded all the video from it, for it, um, the talking parts, portions of it, but the the um, B-reel, whatever, you know, like the, 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 the video uh, examples of why I think the way I think, that's still being actively put together. But I'm not gonna change anything because of this accident. What I said is the truth, and I, I put it all out there, I'm not gonna change a word. I'm gonna leave that a go. So a lot of you guys are gonna be like, oh my God, this is crazy. I knew it all along, this and that, and this and that, but it is what it is. Because at this point, I'm gonna tell y'all something that you're gonna see in that video. This is for me. Today starts a new day for me. I'm putting my past in the past. I'm no longer, after you see this docuseries, I'm no longer talking about my inheritance. I'm not talking about my house that I had in DC. I'm not talking about the parties I threw. I'm not talking about none of that. What I'm doing every day, I got my notebook, I'm keeping track of the money I made each day. And my life is not gonna revolve around money. My life is gonna be back to being about me, my kids, family, not money. I'm never gonna get all that money back thinking about getting the money back. I'm gonna get that money back by doing something I love, I'm passionate about, and growing my wealth to a level that I'm happy with. It might not ever get to a million plus dollars. It might only be $500,000, but as long as I'm happy, that's all that matters. And I've not been happy. I've been angry, miserable, thinking about the past, what I had, what I want again, and that's not a recipe for success. So with that said, you know, from this point on, um, you're gonna see that docu-series, but it ain't gonna be no talking about that. And I'm happy with the position I'm in. At this point, I'm at the lowest. But I know as I come back a million times from being at my lowest, this time I'm gonna remain because when I succeed or excel at something, I'm not going to fight to just push, just to like get over that little bit of hump that's gonna cause everything to derail and be bad. No, I'm gonna just accept the greatness that I've reached at that point and I'm gonna just be happy with that. And tomorrow, fight to, for, for for better. But it's gonna be one day at a time. It ain't gonna be me trying to, you know, once again, get it all in one day. And that's my issue, getting it all in one day. It has caused me to be miserable and happy and just all over the place with no direction. Just me talking about this is giving me a headache. So today starts zero dollars. 
Zero dollars. And every day, we climb from here. Now, I know a lot of y'all, because I was somewhat vague in this video, I haven't really gone too deep into it. You're gonna see it in that docu-series, but look guys, y'all can talk among yourselves in the chat, in my comment section, but I would not be engaged, okay? I would not be communicating with you guys. I'm putting my full focus on this docu-series because I don't wanna be influenced by negativity and hate because I still have an ego, because that's gonna cause me to crash out and do something that I don't wanna do that's not going to be good for me i want to make sure that you know everything that i'm doing makes sense everything that i'm doing is what i want and everything that i'm doing is going to empower me to to ultimately overcome all of this so i appreciate y'all appreciate all love and support hit the like button if you don't mind subscribe if you're not subscribed i'll see you guys on monday docuseries but remember guys we got one week of docu-series, then a week after is gonna be my ride-alongs in film form, okay? Ride-alongs in film form, film form, and then we're going to arrange or set up lives that are gonna be more about what happened in my life, but it ain't gonna be about, you know, kicking in and politics and all of that stuff. I'm not doing that no more, guys. Um, I want my life to be better, and I have to fight for better. That's how we're, that's how we start. Once again, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Thank you. I'm out. Peace.